All right, Shaggy. So on today's show, we will be discussing Nazem Kadri getting the first star of the week. I'm sure Gary Bettman just loves that. We'll be talking about that. We talk about these streaks that the Avalanche have going in the home streak and the overall streak. Uh, but what I want to know, pressing issues that we need to talk about. Uh, you've never been to Vegas, you said, right? No. I've been to Vegas. I've seen the Bellagio fountains. Uh, I I don't. When I see the fountains, I don't think let's put some hockey players in the middle of there and have them throw pucks around on a pond. No, I think of Ocean's Eleven, Ten and Teller. <laughs> yeah, magic, magic shows like you know, not. Hey, let's put some hockey players that don't want to be out on uh, liquid water because they'd rather be on frozen water because that's kind of the sport here, NHL. This league. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli. Joining me as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom. Kyle Sullivan is in the house. So on today's episode, we will be discussing Nazem Kadri getting that first star of the week. Uh, these streaks that the Avalanche have going, can they continue them? And that will kind of go hand in hand with looking at the Avalanche February schedule, uh, which we kind of touched on because most of it is those makeup games. But we'll talk about that in conjunction with how much longer can these streaks go that the Avs have? Pretty impressive, obviously. And we will, in the final segment, kind of, we got one game left, obviously, against Arizona, and then a week break. Who should, on the Avalanche, who should treat this game against the Arizona Coyotes as their all-star game? Obviously talking about maybe like the the deeper players, dumb depth players, not Makar and, and, and not Kadri. But who are some guys that need to treat this as their all-star game? And leave a, leave like, you know, when you have a week off, you want to end on a good note. Yeah, this is your smash mouth. Hey, now you're an all-star all-star game for those who are not going to Vegas. Exactly. So <laughs> before we get to all that, follow the show on social media outlets, L O P N underscore avalanche on Twitter, locked on avalanche on Instagram questions, comments, concerns, opinions to locked on avalanche at gmail.com and follow the show on YouTube over on our YouTube stream. Just hit subscribe and get notified when a new show goes live. So we got the word that Nazem Kadri is your number one star of the week and uh yes golf claps all around for him uh and he just continues to have uh the season of his career that's no secret uh now sitting do you have the stats in front of you i, I, didn't really I do so, I, I i actually have them tattooed on my forearm and just adjust them <laughs> on the day yeah he's so, sitting he's sitting right. third in points right now in the league like that's that's not shabby especially with the company he's keeping like with Herb, uh, Huberto, he's on a hot team. I mean, you saw last night, that team is incredible. That might be a long-term foe for the Avalanche. Hmm. And Dreisaitl, the way the Edmonton Oilers are going, I don't know if they can maintain that. So could Nas slide into that second spot and it be a battle for that one spot? Because he's only three points out. That's the thing. That's what I was going to say. Like Normally at this stage... Like Connor McDavid is so far ahead of everybody, everyone's kind of playing for second place right now. But he's right in the mix. Mm-hmm. He's three three points out. Nobody, zero people, had Nazem Kadri at this stage of the game in the season. No, and the fact that he continues to to kind of truck along to the tune of being the number one star of the week. Um. So what do you have? You had three goals and five assists and three game-winning goals and four outings to help the Avalanche um, move into first. But I'm just reading off of the uh, NHL.com. So he's just continuing to impress. And you got to start asking the question, is, is he a Hart Trophy candidate? Yeah. Is he a Hart Trophy winner? I mean, that is now on the table. That is a very real possibility. And we're at the halfway point. Obviously, there's a good amount of season to go. If he can continue this, even if he – I don't think he has to finish first. No. He doesn't have to finish first in points. 
if he if he finishes like this, like three points out of out of first overall scoring, I mean, I, I'm trying to think. I mean, any of those guys would be legit in in winning that thing. But you, I mean, just based on like what, like name recognition, Drysaitel has it on him. Probably Huberdo does too. So he would probably be like a long shot to win it. But I don't know, man. If you're if you're a, a voter and you're a writer and you vote on these things, you have to be impressed with what what Kadri does. You expect it from Huberdo. You expect it from Drysaitel. And for for Kadri to be up there with those guys for the, the duration of the season, if he can do that, how do you not throw some votes his way? And not only is he up there, when the storyline for the first quarter of the season was the Avalanche are always hurt, and it's only magnified by Nathan McKinnon being out, Nas has been the constant for the Avalanche all year long. And is that not the definition of the heart? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he. I think that's a great point. And and we'll think about it this way. Like, and I know this is just you know you, you can't really. This is all just surmising, but if the season ended today, would he mm. win it? Would he win that award? If the season ended today and we're just going off of, of points and he's up against Huberdeau and he's up against Dreisaitl, uh, you know, and it, the crappy thing about this is as long as Ovechkin kind of hangs around there, which he mm. is, he's only one point behind. <clears throat> I kind of feel like Ovechkin is going to override Kadri. I feel like Kadri is going to be the odd man out here. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of these awards are star power and, yeah. you know, Ovechkin is the elder statesman who's who's doing what he's doing at 79 years old. <laughs> and and people want to see that. Yeah. So that's my concern is come award time and they're going to announce these, you know, the top three. If things stay the same like this, let's just ride that Huberto. It'll be Huberto dry side. I think they'll just throw Ovechkin in there because. He's Ovechkin, and yeah. Kadri's going to get kind of like shunned here. See, this is where the, what was it, 56 last year to 82 game season will make a difference. Like, if we play this game against Arizona tonight, let's just say Nas gets two more points. Like, Nas looks great. Dreisaitl, you look at Edmonton, you're like, well, nobody's valuable on Edmonton right now. <laughs> so it's like a one and two race. And then if this goes all the way out to 82, can Ovechkin keep that going with that team? Can he keep that production going? Because it's literally just the Ovechkin show. He's he's showing up, showing out, and he's carrying it by himself. And I think his team is intentionally feeding him to get those points so he could get closer to that Gretzky record. And it's just it's Nas doing Nas things for the Avalanche, being the consistent. And Uberto, like the Panthers are incredible. Like yeah. I think that's going to be the storyline all year. It's it's Avalanche. It's going to be Panthers, and they're going to be chasing each other in standings and in these little statistical races all year long. I think that's going to be your race. And if it comes down to it, I think just because the league is the way it is, we're going to have a, a Taylor Hall, Nathan McKinnon type year, mm-hmm. and Nas is going to get the he's going to be shunned and put on the back burner for another name. Yeah, but you know. By that metric, you know, if, if Ovechkin is keeping uh, Washington alive, he should get some looks. You know I mean, I'm not saying he shouldn't, but uh, how we're kind of like touting Kadri for doing that for the Avs. If Ovechkin's doing that for Washington, who's an older team, yeah, um, you know, that that's impressive. So I want to see how this all <clears throat> shapes up. And I know we had some conversation with some people over on YouTube about some people don't care about awards and things like that. I think they're important. I do. I think they're important, especially when you're a mid-market team. Yeah. Uh, you want the rest of the the hockey community and maybe those, uh, you know, not super fans that kind of casually follow the NHL to be like, oh, who's who's Nazem Kadri? Like, who's this Nazem Kadri guy that that yeah. took the Hart Trophy away from Connor McDavid? Yeah. Will be the conversation from for those like people and for people who are watching. Like, you're like, no, he had an incredible season. So I do. I, I, I like awards. I, I look forward. I look forward to award shows. I don't look forward to all star games, but I think yeah. we've established that. But um, awards, I think, are a big deal in sports because you're you're that's how you are when your career is over. It's how many. And again, I don't like the all star game, but mm-hmm. I, I understand being awarded being an all star. How many all star games did you make? How many championships did you win? 
How many heart trophies did you win? You know, that's what the metric is for you to be kind of viewed as your legacy. So they are important. And piggybacking off that, when you're talking about the importance of all-star games and awards, those two metrics alone is why we still talk about John Scott every year (laughs) and why Taylor Hall keeps finding a place to land. Um, Yeah. For like Taylor Hall won the heart and it's earned him a spot in all of these little stops that he goes, Buffalo, New Jersey, like it's like Boston now, like, when all this talent's out there, you're like, oh, but he's got that heart. Maybe we could capture that one more time. That little award is what separates you statistically. If you're even and the money's even, that little heart, you're like, he was good at one time, good enough to get that heart. Let's give him a chance. Maybe we can capture that. And that's what separates you. You're absolutely right. And Nazem Kadri going into an unrestricted free agent year, don't tell me he's not going to command more money with a heart trophy on his back. Exactly. So, yeah. It's important. So, all right. Uh, let's hear from Bet Online, and then let's get into. Uh, we're going streaking. We're we're going through the quad. Uh, we're going streaking. <laughs> going to KFC. All right. Uh, but Bet Online, there might be less football in our. Well, there will be less f- football in our future. One game to get. Well, two if you want to call, count the Pro Bowl. But does one really game? Count, count, count the one Pro game. Like, like we said, <laughs> one game left to go for the NFL season. And but bet online, we are betonline.net now, and we have way more odds and info for the playoff season from scores, totals, player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land. Bet online is the number one spot for all things NFL betting in 2022. And it's not just football, betonline.net's basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC odds coverage is the best in the business. From sports right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, Bet Online is your number one online wagering destination. It's the fastest and easiest way to wager in all your favorite sports and play your favorite games. It's where the game starts. That is betonline.net. All right, so let's uh, get into these streaks that the Avalanche have. They're well known, they're well documented, but how long can they last? Is what we're gonna kind of dive into here. The home streak currently at 18 games. The record for that is 23, set by the Detroit Red Wings. And then just overall, yeah, you're shaking your head like, we, oh man, we had to mention them on the show. I hated that year too. My goodness, yeah, they were a yeah. unit. Um, and then the overall games you have right now are obviously at 10 games. They've won their last 10 games in a row, 16-game uh, point streak. And the franchise record for consecutive wins is 12. So th- both are within range. Obviously, mm-hmm. the, the overall is, is very much in range, right around the corner. And when you look at the schedule, so let's go after the, the overall first. So like I said, we're at 10 they need 13 to break the record. That would mean a win tonight against Arizona at home. And you got your week off. And then the to tie it would be at home against Tampa. And then to, to surpass it would be the following Sunday in Dallas. So Arizona home, Tampa home, Dallas on the road. Is that doable? Uh, you run into this problem. If you do keep the not just the overall, but the home streak going, coming back from the All Star break and beating Tampa, do you fall into a trap going to Dallas, playing a a squirrely, ornery like a like a trapped rodent Dallas <laughs> Stars team? Like you don't know what they're going to do. You know they're going to bite you. You don't know. How you don't, you don't know if they're rabid? You don't. You, you don't really want to find out. You just want to get out of Dallas with all your fingers. But like Dallas is scary, and not only that, you've got to follow it up with Dallas coming to Denver. That scares. Yeah, that me. is true, right? That so, scares me. As far as standings go, if if you're if you're Dallas, okay, like you're. I mean, you, you want to win every game you play. That goes mm-hmm. without saying. But when you are let's see they are 23 17 and 2 48 points not horrible uh but right now it does not let me see 
Mm, you are well, you're right there with Calgary for the mm-hmm. playoffs. Calgary has two games in hand on you, but you're tied in points right now. So that's I mean, Dallas doesn't care if they're going to try to end a streak or not. I no. mean, that, that that would be icing on the cake for them, but they need points and they need wins. Yes. So they are they are in that position where they, they got to win as many games as possible. And, you know, when the Avalanche come into town, not an easy place to win. I don't Avalanche never really play well when they go into Dallas, I feel. Um, the worst that, goal horn and goal song on God's green earth. It, My gosh. Like, <laughs> yeah. Ugh, haunts um, me to this day. We should do that one day. Rank all the uh, uh, or not all star break. Them. That would take forever. But yeah, we got some we got some shows to fill in we'll kind of go over the best and worst uh, goal horns that's not a bad idea but yeah. for this um you know the, the arizona game you you got to feel good about that one mm-hmm. tampa you feel good about it because it's at home and they are they have as much time off as you do so you're on, kind of on the level playing field for that so i'd rather be home coming off a, a week off and then da- yeah that is going to be like for for the abs yeah, they're going to want to win because uh, they are. They are going to want to keep that streak intact. They're going to want to beat that. Yeah. So if they can get to that game, that's going to be a fun game because both teams are going for different things. Yeah. The, the Avs are going for a, a franchise record, and Dallas is trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. Yeah. That's going to be a fun game if it can if it can get that far. And that Tampa game, um, just speaking as it is. If it's a win or a loss, it scares me how we respond either way because that is one of those heavyweight matchups that mm-hmm. if we win, do the Avalanche play down again? And Dallas is one of those teams you play down, you don't come back up. <laughs> we'll get and you. they'll get you really quick. I mean, they took us out game seven, bubble hockey. Everybody remembers. Like, this team, they're... <laughs> they're they're in the danger of losing not just their stars on their team, no pun intended, but even their coach at any given second. Yeah, right. So this team's playing for everything right now. And if you could get through Tampa healthy, you like your chances going into Dallas. But if it's one of those one nothing, 2-1 Tampa Bay games that goes into overtime, and then you have to fly to Dallas, yeah. All right. So before we get to the home record, Yes or no? Do they do it? I cons- can't. I, I can't bet against them. They have proved me wrong so many times when I've doubted them. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you. I think I think it gets to at least the Dallas game, and then we'll revisit yeah. that. Let's see how they play against uh, Tampa Bay, and then we'll 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 go discuss that when it comes up. But um, I think they at least get to it. I think they do. I think they at least tie it. Yeah. So as far as the home winning streak obviously that is at 18 games like we said the record is 23 so they would need to obviously win those two games against arizona and tampa and then uh the the second game against dallas in a row at home so you got arizona tampa dallas and then you got a week and a half before you play home again because towards the end of february you have a four game road trip um, that you're not going to be back in ball arena for a little while. But once you are, you are up against Winnipeg. And then it bleeds over into March. You would have the March 1st game against the Islanders, which would tie the record. And then uh, you have an away game against Arizona. And then that Saturday, March 5th, is a game against Calgary, which would get you the record. So just to go through the teams, Arizona, Tampa, Dallas, Winnipeg, Islanders, Calgary. How are you seeing that one shaping up? I th- <sighs> the thing that scares me the most is the time in between these home games. Um, like, the, like the Dallas and, and Winnipeg? Yes. Between yeah. Dallas and Winnipeg, that scares me a lot. Winnipeg, last time we played them, wasn't beautiful. Wasn't a great game. The Islanders... They're about to start rattling off home games left and right. Like I think they're about to be the new Islander bubble over at the UBS arena because of all that time they had to wait for the arena to get finished. They just banked all those away games waiting for the arena to get finished. So they're going to finish with more home games. So to get the Islanders back out of UBS arena, 
back into ball arena might help us if we yeah. could get through that game seeing varley again but um <laughs> we'll get to go seize the door off and try and uh beat calgary which is i love getting to see johnny hockey seeing kale mccarr nathan mckinnon and johnny hockey will be i mean that's going to be a great game it's just getting there between dallas and winnipeg the in-between scares me and coming out of detroit to play winnipeg that's terrifying yeah um, I want to see how that road trip goes. So after Dallas, you have right the day after Dallas, you're playing Vegas mm. uh, on the road. You're playing. And then you got a little bit of an East Coast swing. You're playing um, at Buffalo, at Boston, at Detroit. So how like how many of those games can you win? How does the road trip go for you? Is it a bad road trip? Do you go like one and three? Um, you know, even if you go two and two. If, if you say say you win the easy the quote unquote easy games, you you win Buffalo and you win Detroit, and then you lose Vegas and you lose Boston. Um, I don't know. I just I kind of want to see how that road trip goes. Is it a difficult road trip? If it is, I think they're happy to be home and they're playing uh, a Winnipeg team. I don't haven't even checked Winnipeg's schedule, so I don't know if they're coming off a of back to back. There's other factors you have to take into play here. We're just kind of yeah. looking at the schedule and and kind of just throwing up our best guesses. So. Uh, the, on the road, you'd have to figure maybe there's a loss or something coming in on the road. So does the, does the consecutive game streak end before the home streak ends? That's always a possibility, but you could come home and continue that road or that home winning streak against Winnipeg. Um, so yeah, I think they're going to be happy to be home and, and want to, you know, give the fans a, a, a show and, you know, because they're, they're not going to be in the arena for over a week. Islanders will be interesting because you haven't played them yet. Uh, so here's the thing. I think for both of these, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. Let's, let's yeah. not get ourselves. It's going to yeah. be difficult for both of them. It's going to be difficult, but I think there's a possibility there that they get, that they tie both of these records and it comes down to the team that, that they are playing. Like, the Dallas game for the consecutive one is going to be tough. And if they can get to Calgary where beating Calgary would set the record, I think that's going to be a tough game too. So that's where I'm going with these is that they could get to tying both of them. And I haven't made a decision yet. And if they will beat them, we'll talk if they get there, then, then we'll talk. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. So um, as we move on from that, but I want to hear from you guys. What, what do you guys think? It, it, what, if, if they if they have a loss for both of these streaks, what do you think they are? Hit us up, uh, LockdownAvalanche at gmail.com. We will get to uh, who kind of needs to put up an all-star performance against the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, but first we're going to hear from Rock Auto is back in business. Well, they've never really went out of business, but they're back in business with here us with uh, at Locked On NHL and Locked On Avalanche. And with the ever increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand that their warehouse happens to carry. You have a computer with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. The prices are reliably low for every customer. It's a family-run business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on. And the how did you hear about us section so they know that we sent you to them. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car or toaster will ever need. That's right. Not literally a toaster. That's just Kyle's car is the toaster. You uh, betcha. Rock, rockauto.com. All right. So, Kael McCarr going to the All-Star game. Nazem Kaji going to the All-Star game. Nathan McKinnon would have went to the All-Star game. Mika Rantanen should be going to the All-Star game. Uh, maybe even Devontae should be going to the All-Star game. A lot of All-Stars on the Avs, whether they're going or not. So we kind of wanted to focus in on this last game before the Avs week and a day break. And who wants to leave a, a, a good taste in their mouths uh, after one more game before the All-Star break? 
throw it out to you first. So who, who needs to kind of step up tonight and feel good about themselves going into the break? You know, when I get into my avalanche onesie and watch the all-star game, the last thing I want to remember is what I do remember of Eric Johnson. And the last time I saw him hit the ice, mm. um, his, the goonery and him getting benched. And if you're wearing a letter on your Jersey, it means something. Right. And it means respect and like someone you can look up to. And I have looked up to EJ for that for a long time. And I need him to step up tonight against Arizona and do what the Condor does and a race riding the pine through the rest of that last game. He's, he needs to like redeem himself. Yes. He needs to get yeah. out there and do what he does. Pretend Tyson Berry is out there. That was his best friend. Yeah. So <laughs> pretend he's on the blue line and well, just rip one in. That's where I was going to go with this. You know, you mentioned Tyson Berry. Well, and now, you know, his best friend right now is Gabe Landeskog. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he is also very good friends with with Nathan McKinnon. All these guys yes. are, are really good friends. Th those two guys are, are pretty tight. Do you kind of I don't want to say give him a pass, but can you can you understand why he did what he did? Because, you know, his his buddy got leveled. Uh, whether it was intentional or not, we had episodes on that. If you want to go back yeah. and let's know how we feel about it. We're not here to bash Terrell Hall. We're just saying, like, when you're in that moment and you're in the heat of the battle, you don't know that. You don't. I'm sure he went and maybe looked at it during during uh, the intermission, but still, your your pal, your superstar, your buddy, got his face rearranged. You're gonna be upset, man. Like I, I get it, but so giving him a cross check, one okay, two your toe in the line three you went overboard but can you understand and, and be kind of maybe forgiving of why he was going a little bit too far or you just can't cross that line because you're hurting your team no because i know if ej would have continued and he would have got sussy for that and got kicked out of the game the second he walks into that locker room and sees a bleeding nathan mckinnon nate would be like what are you doing in here and then he would get on him about how he acted because nate's just crazy yeah. He's like, no, the team needs you out there. I'm not out there. They need you. Why are you in here? Right. So you've got to think about it. And especially with how young the team is, like they need EJ out there. And it's we true. need yeah. EJ out there. And I, I think, you know, you tried. And we, we talked about this. You tried to engage him. He didn't want any part of it. Fine. Now you know the outcome. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's days after the fact and, you know, for a fact what happened, the results. And, you know, he's, he's going to be out a little while. You are playing them again in February. Then I, I kind of feel like if you tried to engage him and he's not having any part of it, then fine. Back off, play the game and then see see what the end results are. We know what they are. McKinnon is going to have some surgery done some facial fractures would just that always just sounds like horrible to me I mean, because it is yes um, okay now ex you know extract your revenge at the yeah. next game now because now you have the substance to go on yep so you tried didn't work just put it in the in the back burner until you know a couple weeks later and that's going to happen i can guarantee you that is going to happen and if taylor hall taylor hall is not going to be able to run forever Nope, he's not. So um, he's going to have to to own up to it, even though we're in agreement that it wasn't intentional. You you uh, sidelined our superstar and you're going to have to to answer for that. Same way Nas had to run from the blues for a little bit. And Jordan Greenway is also on the run from the avalanche currently. Enjoy that contract. We will see you soon. And Gabe. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and uh Gabe Landeskog had to answer yeah. to, to Chicago multiple yep. times. And I think that is finally over, but still mm -hmm. like, it's just the unwritten rules of hockey Yep. for me. Uh, and, and this is not to say this guy is not, uh, you know, doing well in the abs overall. He he's been uh, a shining light, but for me, I think Logan O'Connor wants to uh, finish this, you know, first half of the season on a, a high note. Not only because you know it's just good for his uh, his I guess his own personal ego and you know his his confidence, but if you look at his numbers, like they're kind of down a little bit. Yeah. Um. I mean, he he was he was hot earlier in the year, and then he had a couple of assists the last two games, one against Buffalo, one against Chicago. 
but he's got large stretches where he's got nothing. And I think I, I'm forgiving of it this year. You know, it's, it's fine. Like he, he, the way he's playing is spectacular um, overall, but I think he wants to cut down on stuff like that kind of stuff that we talk about, like with Tyson Jost a lot yeah, and even Andre Burakovsky limit those games where you have, you know, multiple games in a row where you're not putting anything on the stat sheet. So, cause he, he has been like, um, he, here's, you got, let's see, three in a row and then one, two, three, four, five in a row. And then a one, two, another three in a row, one, two, three, four in a row. So you have those chunks. And I think, you know, the more that you can interject a, uh, an assist or a goal here and there, um, the better he'll feel. And he also has not had a shorthanded goal in a long time. And I know it's one of the most difficult things to do in, in the sport. Uh, but we were spoiled early on because it seemed like he was getting them every single yeah. time the abs had, <laughs> were, were on the penalty kill and he's had opportunities. He just, uh, didn't he, he just had one the last game or was it, yeah. him or, I think it was him that had it. Yeah. Um, I, I'm he, looking for that. Yeah. I am looking for a shorthanded goal against Arizona, uh, because I feel like that's what he wants his staple to be. Yeah. Like he wants to be known as a, a speedy guy, which he already is. Um, and he wants to be known as that guy who is dangerous on the penalty kill. And he is that, but um, it's starting to lose its luster a little bit. And that's not a knock on him. It's an insanely difficult thing to do, but I think he's going to really try for one against Arizona. And I know when you had Connor on, he said LOC is like, you could get him confused with Nathan McKinnon with the speed yeah, and the way that he like, goes for that shorthand on the penalty kill. He's almost like the reverse flash version of Nathan McKinnon. Like he's, he's great on the penalty kill and that's where he shines. And I was actually talking to someone today who said their favorite player on the avalanche is LOC. And I was taken aback. I've never Mm -hmm. heard that. And once you think about it, I could see it Mm -hmm. and I completely agree with you. It's about time. He does something. It's nice. We've, we've fallen in love with the good things he does. Now let's do it again. The consistency. Now, like yep. we, we we've seen it, we know what you can do. Now, just do it on a more consistent basis. And if that can happen, you might be looking at you know uh, Andrew Burkowski replacement. I don't know. I, did I say that out loud? Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, and and even having said that, I'm rooting hard for for Burkowski. He's just a good guy. I want him to do well. But what well, it's been a month. It's about time for another hat trick. Come on, <laughs> come on now. Uh, he, dude, if he gets that, let's let's call that Burkowski hat trick and a LOC shorthanded goal. And the last Far goal away. of the night, the first goal of the season was Jack Johnson. The last yeah. goal before the break needs to be Kurt McDermott. Oh. <laughs> All those parlay those three things, and you will be sitting pretty. Uh, in the Bahamas or something. All right. (laughs) That's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, We'll be back tomorrow to talk about this last game before the all-star break. Hopefully the ass can continue their streaks. I think we're pretty confident they can, but they got to take care of business. Let's not play down to the level of the the coyotes. That's going to wrap it up. Everybody. Thanks for making this your first listen of the day. Check out locked on NHL for your second listen of the day. Get caught up on everything going on around the league. He is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli, and this is the Locked on Avalanche podcast. See you guys tomorrow.